Hi, hello. In this video, I will present this game played by Terry and uh, Magnus Carlsen. And they did they kick him from the website? I don't know. Anyway, so Terry started with d4, knight f6, g6. And this is a bullet game, by the way. They have only one minute and there is no increment. And people who watch the game seems uh, happy. And it's also my first time watching this game. So Magnus is with uh, black pieces, so we can see here. And um, so he's international master from the other player, international master from Peru, I guess. Castled and so Magnus sort of ignored the center things and played this slightly awkward move instead of like d5 or something or d4 d6 so it's like a gambit but for what like you, you could play there first and so what's the point so now we cannot take the piece and knight stuck there anyway and after queen take queen com comes for help and then he doesn't want to lose this pawn and all the soldiers are important, so knight g4 and they can take with this knight, so then obviously but still there are two defenders for this pawn and rook e8 so g3 and finally so the interesting part is Magnus waited a lot for this e5 move and finally is making to control the center and then not this time it's inaccuracy that's interesting uh, I don't know why it's inaccuracy actually and uh, bishop g2 and e4 so e4 it seems nice move and he has to respond e4 I think he probably played here so to maybe thinking that I can take later so that's what humans think um, and there are three pieces attacking the spawn and but if once you can protect it with your pawn or something, so, and then, however, f5 is also looks problematic because it, so, you know, I can, can attack your king, but how, so he doesn't have, like, white square thing out, so only queen can come and check one day if there is a good day, uh, and then once the queen is not protecting this pawn, he can take it and he can, a uh, great advantage, and in this case, I think black should allow this bishop free. And if king can attack something like that, but it doesn't work really so because of this take. So, what he plays, so yeah, so he allows it. So, it's a sacrifice or what? He can take it? Why not? I don't know. <coughs> anyway, and he played knight d6, and uh. It seems this is a nice move for some reasons, but for some reasons it's not nice move, but yeah, at the end you will end up taking this bishop, I guess. So you will play his rook somewhere else, like uh, rook d, it says rook d8, but yeah, that's fine. Rook d8 is fine. And the take, so take is inaccuracy, interesting thing. So the knight is doing better here, so... So normally they, they compare, they say whether knight is more important or bishop, so in this case, so even, you know, there's no obvious tactic here, like for white or black, but it seems this knight is doing more job than this bishop, so that's why taking the bishop is not the best here. But it seems the position is quite complicated, and, but indeed they spend very little time, they play instinctively, we see 14 seconds he played. He used 14 seconds and he used 16 seconds. Anyway, takes. So, and. So I think black should secure the king or something, I don't know. So, black really wants this pawn back. So, so black is like. From the beginning of the game, he is obsessed with the kid, with this pawn. And I think this bishop is doing a better job in here in, than in here just to take this pawn because this pawn doesn't have much meaning here so it's not a post for the knight now so it's like a I think a Magnus should ignore and then focus on like balancing the the board and just play 
for attack or something but white is very solid and hard to hard to attack and hard to um, hard to play so castle and finally he can take the pawn and it's fine according to engine and interestingly so Magnus didn't play take take so yeah anyway so instead play 94 and knight d4 is uh, potentially dangerous because once knight is there so there is this move he is attacking three different pieces and he can come back here and so that's nice that's very nice knight and better than this bishop so that's why he's supposed to do something to expose his king and just get rid of this bishop I guess so this bishop is very valuable right now and uh, and for the bullet game at least not for classical settings so he played he didn't play the best move so and uh, after a so he, he knows that he has to attack somehow so after he signed queen e, so g4 is not the best move to so because the bishop h3 is better yeah, maybe because of the e3 is is not good for white because once he played a3 it's also a single pawn trading the king here and it can be passed for a bishop here here and there's no way to take this pawn i guess unless he plays this maybe but there are many moves so it takes many moves but he cannot play here he has to play like here so it's you know so that cannot come here Otherwise, he will lose this pawn and he will attack the rook or something. Let's see what it what will happen. Yeah. So once queen is here, it's like a dead position, so he cannot come back here. Um, but what else he can do to attack this pawn? But he doesn't really have to attack that much, I guess. So he can play maybe here and here. That's also fine. F4. So now after F4, so it seems impossible to attack this pawn now. Um, so that's a nice um, positional chess game uh, for a bullet game and g5 was played and knight c5 seems inaccuracy so after this so so because uh, this queen is queen is protecting the knight and he wants to play his might to somewhere else maybe so this is like a weak piece now so before it, it was a big piece maybe but he could play like here that is pawn protecting is secure maybe because maybe but it expands it with this attack yeah so engine suggests here play here anyway then h4 comes and bishop so after this move he doesn't allow bishop is coming to this annoying place he can sacrifice anyway the rook possibly to stop it so now they play very positional for a and then the game looks equal, very interesting game. And bishop comes to h3, and rook c7, and king h2. So king, why he played a king h2? Hard to understand. So like, what is wrong with this? Because the pawn is sort of, yeah. So there's check potentially, but like there's no piece who can come here. So that's not really a uh, threat um, after here they cannot play somewhere else anyway so that's another thing so king h8 but king h8 should be okay I guess uh, so because there is potential check but seems maybe not that essential not that important not that dangerous not and there are better moves to make rook g1 is coming and wow and then uh, uh, as I said before, I think this bishop is very useful here. It stops many, you know, many attacks. And this attack is like not really big, that dangerous. So this bishop is doing better than knight. I think if he takes, it's something that white wanted. And right here, takes, takes, and the game is simple now. Way more simpler. Rook d8, and so now. So who is winning? So the white is winning. So that's why this text move was not good. 
and after that there is check and I think the white is winning this game so he made another mistake wow he didn't see this move yeah, as a as an international master but yeah that's also a bit dangerous maybe because thinking that maybe Queen can somehow attack the king and this pawn wasn't used at all so that's sad so that pawn was useless there and still waiting to be promoted to queen sadly and and king g4 and after that Magnus resigned because he will lose this pawn and he will lose another pawn and the white has like tons of pawns and black has nothing so look looking at the statistics it looks very interesting so so one is winning one is losing and winning and losing wow it's like a here losing and winning equal losing it's like it changes very frequently very interesting anyway thanks for watching this video if you like this video you can like the video you can and subscribe the channel